Uh, I think it's also a, an indication of the growing interest in, in issues relating to <coughs> diagnosis with infants and young children. Uh, I think when we <coughs> began our work uh, trying to reconceptualize some of the challenges and themes dealing with the diagnosis of infants and young children and their families, there was only a handful of people who were interested. Most people uh, thought of this as a rather boring or uninspiring subject or uh, and the, fa the fact that more and more professionals are beginning to work with infants and young children and seeing this as a legitimate uh, field for uh, early intervention, preventive work, and treatment where there are already sometimes chronic and rather challenging problems is, uh, is exciting to all of us who've been uh, struck by the enormous challenge of this field, but also the excitement of being able to work with infants and young children at such an early time in their lives when it's often possible to help them get back on the course of proper development with relatively short-term and relatively focused types of uh, interventions. But our interventions in part depend on the accuracy of our diagnostic work and our ability to pinpoint where the difficulties are. Many of you know that historically there have not been in the existing diagnostic systems, the DSM-3, now the DSM-3R, prior to that DSM-2, uh, many categories to conceptualize problems of infants and young children. And many of us simply worked around the formal system. We might use an inappropriate uh, classification category. Uh, children might be inappropriately diagnosed as autistic or pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified for lack of a better diagnosis, but they may have had one or two features that were similar to those features we commonly see in autistic or pervasive developmental disorders types of syndromes. Or alternatively, we might have uh, diagnosed children failure to thrive or uh, experiencing uh, one of the other categories, which was reactive attachment disorder. But also that was a rather severe descriptor having to do with uh, a very extreme, uh, monumental uh, lack of care and uh, therefore uh, apathy and lack of development. There were not a lot of categories, however, to account for the vast array of challenges we were observing with infants and young children. So for example, when a, an eight-month-old baby was inconsolable and would cry for three or four hours during the day and wake up six times at night, and where the mother would come in and say, my baby is a tyrant. Every time I walk two inches away from him, he cries inconsolably, and I have to be there either right next to him or carrying him around. And every time, I just don't guess exactly how he wants the bottle held or how to hold him, he also cries inconsolably. And I feel like I'm being controlled, and I feel like I can't breathe, and I feel like I'm about to jump out the window or throw my baby out the window. And in fact, when one would observe such an infant, and one would see the infant sitting in the middle of the room with his hands looking like this here, the image, mother's infant, of, mother's uh, picture of the little tyrant would, uh, would not be so, uh, so inappropriate. And when one would watch, that this baby uh, did not gesture and signal the way uh, we would expect an eight-month-old, was not reaching out to play with a toy, was not uh, vocalizing back to mother when mother would vocalize, was not evidencing broad uh, beatific smiles when mother would make her funny faces at him. Uh, and one would see a solemn, angry-looking, somewhat constricted in terms of emotional range infant. One would also be impressed that, gee, this is a a real challenge and if by working with this sort of a situation maybe we can not only help this baby and mommy and the whole family but maybe we can also prevent some difficulties later on but if one looked at the system of diagnosis one would say but there's no way to to describe this baby in a formal way sure we can describe it uh, phenomenologically and we could even describe the family dynamics and the interactive dynamics and we all did that. We all would describe what we thought was going on interactionally. We would have videotapes to show it. We would understand a little bit about mother's feelings and the family patterns and a little bit about the baby's development up to that point. Uh, but we all felt somewhat undermined by the fact that we would either have to use a misleading 
diagnosis if we were submitting uh, this for insurance or if we were part of an agency where we needed to keep records. Uh, and it, in a sense, tied our hands behind our back. There were, there were other cases too. There were 18-month-old uh, toddlers who were biting and kicking and spitting and uh, who weren't uh, using a lot of gestures to signal their needs and weren't beginning to move into using words or even the, the pre-make-believe play stage of play. Uh, we were concerned about how to describe their emerging aggression. We didn't want to use a conduct disorder category from older children or, or, or uh, categories that are, were developed for adulthood. We also would see uh, four or five month olds who were vigilant and would stare and look frightened whenever they would see a new person who may have been exposed to some abuse uh, in, their, in terms of their earlier uh, histories. Uh, and how do we describe this fearful, vigilant infant who already uh, was experiencing the world as a place that was unsafe? Uh, many of these kinds of patterns were becoming clear as not infrequent in one's uh, daily work with infants and young children. Not to mention uh, parents who came in who were feeling uh, depressed and where one would see tension in the relationship between the infant and parent, uh, where there wasn't any manifest obvious difficulty in the infant yet, but one could picture it happening unless one was able to work with this diet and help them uh, relate uh, in a way that would be more satisfying to both parties. These and other situations were presenting themselves and that in part motivated uh, our work of the Diagnostic Classification Committee at the National Center. And we began simply getting together just to compare notes and say, what are you saying? And what are you saying? And what are you saying? And uh, we all seeing the same things or different things. And because many of us were also consulting with the uh, various DSMs of the American Psychiatric Association, uh, we were also, we needed the camaraderie of meeting with one another to deal with the fact that the adult psychiatrists and child psychiatrists who don't see babies and young children were saying, there can't be problems in children under three. This, 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 this is not, not true. This is, uh, where's your proof anyhow? Show me statistics and show me data. So we thought we'd better, uh, not just to give ourselves moral support, but we thought we'd better also begin developing a way of documenting some elements of what we were seeing, at least collect some information on the kind. We began simply getting together just to compare notes and say, what are you seeing? And what are you seeing? And what are you seeing? And uh, we all seeing the same things or different things. And because many of us were also consulting with the uh, various DSMs of the American Psychiatric Association, uh, we were also, we needed the camaraderie of meeting with one another to deal with the fact that the adult psychiatrists and child psychiatrists who don't see babies and young children were saying, there can't be problems in children under three. This, 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 this is not, not true. This is, uh, where's your proof anyhow? Show me statistics and show me data. So we thought we'd better, uh, not just to give ourselves moral support, but we thought we'd better also begin developing a way of documenting some elements of what we were seeing, at least collect some information on the kinds of uh, presenting problems that occur in children under three. Present, get some information on the kinds of interactive and family patterns one sees, on the kinds of constitutional maturational variations one sees. Uh, and hopefully, over time, also see what kinds of therapeutic and preventive intervention approaches would be most effective for different kinds of problems, a process that will obviously take many, many years.